Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this recent study that was able to discover the so-called invisible star. A star that's not typically visible in the night skies. But to find this star they used a very interesting technique. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, when I look into the night skies, I don't really see that many stars, mostly because my vision is pretty bad, so for me, a lot of stars are invisible. But obviously, if you have a very powerful telescope, you're going to be able to see quite a lot. And the more powerful the telescope, the more stars you're going to see. So at some point, if you were to magnify our galaxy by a tremendous amount, you will be able to see stars that were previously invisible to us. And a few years ago, actually more like a decade ago, the scientists used the so-called WISE survey to discover quite a lot of different stars that were practically out there all this time, but we just didn't see them. Specifically here I'm talking about the so-called brown dwarfs, the closest one of which is this right here. This is a binary system known as Lohmann A and Lohmann B. These are brown dwarfs that are just over 6 light years away from us, so basically they're really really close to us. But they're very very difficult to see unless you have a very specialized infrared telescope. And this is how the scientists were able to discover them. So now we know that there's quite a lot of these brown dwarfs in the vicinity and we were able to discover quite a few of them even very close to our own solar system. But this is not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about a different type of a invisible star. It's a typical star very similar to the closest star to us Proxima Centauri, a typical red dwarf. But the thing is, if this red dwarf was really far away from us, we would obviously would not be able to see it at all. However, um, a few years ago, there was a very interesting event known as Gaia 16 AYE. This event was essentially a sudden brightening of a star in the region that you see right here in the night skies. And this brightening didn't just happen once. As the scientists were observing this for several weeks, they witnessed this five different times, which actually is very, very unusual. And just to help you visualize what the scientists were seeing, they were looking at a star, a relatively bright star, known as 2 mass 9040. As they were looking at it, suddenly the star very briefly brightened and then, just like that, went back to its original brightness. Then, a few weeks later, it did so again. And then, again. And then, again. And as this kept happening, the scientists realized that what they're probably observing is a very typical but very mysterious gravitational lensing effect. Mysterious because they weren't really sure what was causing it, but these effects or these phenomena are pretty familiar to us. Gravitational lensing is how we actually did discover quite a lot of different exoplanets, and we also found a lot of other objects and even the most distant star to date. Now, gravitational lensing works on a very simple principle. When there are two massive objects and one of these objects passes in front of the other, the brightness of the object behind will actually increase because of what's known as Einstein's lens or a gravitational lens. The way that this works is basically as follows. This is a simulation that NASA made a few years ago. And here you can see that basically as this object passes in front of the other star or other visible object, it sort of bends the light, creating this very beautiful ring-like formation that we often refer to as Einstein's ring. Now, by looking at this particular star, the scientists were able to predict that this is exactly what's happening here. And they were pretty excited about it, but the scientists from Poland were not satisfied with this. And decided, a few years later, to release this paper with quite a lot of authors in it that essentially analyzes and discusses what exactly caused this gravitational lensing effect. And by the way, this is probably the most authors I've seen on the paper in a very long time. Now, in a nutshell, we're not really particularly concerned with the star that we're looking at. Basically, the 2 mass 1940 star is not really that important. But we are interested in the object that caused the gravitational lensing effect because the study that I just mentioned was able to create a very interesting way for us to analyze these gravitational lenses and find out what exactly is causing the effect. And thus, use these techniques to discover more objects that are technically invisible to us. So what exactly did they discover? Well, as you can probably imagine, it's not really a black hole because I would have been a lot more excited about it. It's also not a neutron star or any other uh, unusual object, such as, for example, brown dwarf or any other compact object like a white dwarf, but it is nevertheless a pretty interesting system. It's a binary red dwarf. 
More specifically, um, two red dwarfs that are orbiting around one another and are also approximately 57 and 36% the mass of our own sun. In other words, if you were to combine them together, it would be very close to the mass of our sun. But the scientists didn't just stop there. They were able to very accurately estimate not just the mass of both stars, but also how long they take to orbit one another. In other words, they were able to very precisely analyze the entire star system here with just those five observations of a gravitational lens. And they discovered a system of two stars with stars taking about 2.8 years to orbit around one another. And all of this at a very, very far away distance of about 2,500 light years away from our planet. And because these are red dwarfs, at this distance there's just no way we would see them otherwise. Simply because they're just way, way too dim in comparison to anything else we're used to. And honestly, this technique is super exciting. Mostly because it can actually allow us to discover a lot of other invisible and technically otherwise impossible to see for us objects. Obviously, we expect to find at least a few black holes this way. As of today, we haven't really seen any so-called invisible uh, solitary black holes, even though we expect millions and possibly even billions of them in our own galaxy. Unfortunately, as of today, the only uh, possible detection of what's known as a primordial black hole or really any kind of a black hole out there was actually um, last year with a Japanese team that detected a very unusual gravitational lens from the Andromeda galaxy. And this could have been potentially a black hole but we're not entirely sure and there's no way for us to check just yet. But by using this technique and more importantly perfecting this technique and even automating it and also creating telescopes that are able to observe the night skies or I guess around the clock 24-7, we could one day discover a lot more of these unusual objects, including black holes, including other planets and other stars that are otherwise invisible to us. And this is also one of the ways we could potentially discover the elusive planet 9, by looking around the night skies and detecting the gravitational lens from a region where we don't expect it to happen would allow us to almost definitely discover an object that's otherwise invisible. In other words, this technique is possibly the future of astronomy and various astronomical observations, simply because it allows us to magnify the light by a tremendous amount. As I mentioned previously, the farthest star we've discovered billions and billions of light years away from us was actually discovered using gravitational lens technique and completely by accident. So once we perfect this technique and once we're able to predict when these gravitational lenses occur, we'll be able to dramatically increase the detection of various objects various planets, various um, unusual hidden objects in the solar system, and most importantly, possibly even discover these elusive black holes that should be out there but we're just not seeing them. As a matter of fact, the only black holes we've seen so far, except for the supermassive ones, are the black holes in binary systems where they actually get to absorb a little bit of the mass from their partner and thus emit a lot of radiation. But unless they're emitting radiation, they're pretty much invisible to us as well. And interestingly, because of the study, they were also able to predict the next time we might be able to see this gravitational lens again, which is why the scientists are going to do their best to try to observe what else is in the star system and thus perfect this technique even more. We expect this to be visible sometime in 2021, and by then we're hoping to have some sort of an automated system, maybe even connected to the very famous Gaia Observatory, thus being able to detect everything in real time and with a lot of precision. So if all goes well, in the next few years we'll be detecting a lot more objects and actually a lot of really interesting objects that we've never even seen before, or at least never been able to see before. So if all goes well, in the next five years we'll have a tremendous amount of new data and a lot of new studies coming out allowing us to understand our galaxy and the universe a little bit better. But I guess until this happens and until future studies, that's kind of it. Check out the study I mentioned in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.